In this quick start video we're going to talk about cloud load balancing and how to create an initial configuration in our web-based management portal. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my username and password and on the main dashboard I'm going to click on the networking tab. Now you'll see that there are a number of sub tabs within this section but we're going to stay on the configuration builder and click on add new pack. Let's give this a name. I'm going to call it uh, web server farm. Click OK. And you'll see that it immediately jumps into the configuration for that particular farm. Now, what is a pack? It's basically a public to public proxy system that allows you to apply firewall, load balancing, and acceleration rules. Now, you'll see that it created a default server group. So, let's go ahead and click Manage. And you'll see that there aren't any servers in there. So, let's click Add New and create our first server. I'm going to call it Web Server 1. Give it an IP address and click Add. And let's also go ahead and add a second server as well. We'll call it Web Server 2. Click Add. And then you'll see that we get a warning dialog here. Now the reason we can't add that second server is because load balancing is not enabled. So let's go ahead and click Enable. And what we really need to do is create a profile for that. So let's give it a name. I'm just going to call it Profile Number 1 to keep things nice and simple. And let's choose a load balancing method. There's, there, are, there, are, there are a number of methods here that are supported. I'm just going to leave it on least connection. That probably makes the most sense. And basically, the load balancer is monitoring all the traffic that's coming in and that it's sending to the web servers behind the scenes. So it knows which server has the most traffic. Uh, so this is probably a, a you know, pretty good choice. We also can choose a persistency type. And persistency is important, uh, for example, if you need to maintain session state. Let's say a user connects, we connect them to a, a certain web server, and they log into an application. Well, if that user gets disconnected, do we need to send them back to the same server to maintain that session state? If we do, then you may want to use this functionality. For now, we're not going to use it, so I'll go ahead and click Save. And you'll see that it saves that, and it adds the additional server to the uh, to the pack here. It'll also show you an icon to just to the right of those servers that gives you the status. And it says no ports are assigned. So we can go ahead and resolve that. But before I do that, I also wanted to show you that you can add servers here from the left. So um, I had another server that I had added before for another pack. I could grab that and drag and drop it right into the uh, pack here. It doesn't work, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. But again, nice and simple functionality. So let's click Manage over on the right-hand side there. And what we want to do is we want to assign a monitor to each of the servers. We need to be able to reliably test them uh, to make sure that they're up and functional so that if they go down, we can pull them out of the pool right away. So I'm just going to use Ping. And before I click Save, let's go to the Ports and Protocol tab here, and I'm going to add port 80 to allow that through. It's a web server. makes good sense. Let's click Update. OK, and save that. And let's do the same thing for the other server here as well. Add port 80, add the ping test, click update, and we're good. Now, we can click back to the main web server farm pack that we created. And now what we need to do is add an external public facing port. So here we can add port 80, and this is what faces the internet. Let's get that in here. And, and yes, it's true, you do have to add ports in three different places, but there's a reason for that. If you go now to manage, what we can do is we can specify the internal port or the private side. And again, I'm going to do port 80, but you know, you could do almost anything here. I could do 8080 or any custom port that I wanted to to obfuscate uh, what the web service was really hiding behind. Uh, you could also do port 443 on the public side and port 80 on the private side to do SSL offload. So it gives you the functionality of NAT or PAT uh, like you get in a traditional firewall. So now that we're pretty much uh, configured here, I can go back to the main page. I can click Refresh to get a, a status update, and you'll see that everything is updated. Behind the scenes, Web Server 1 and 2 are now up. My default server group is now up. So we're ready to publish this. So let's click the Publish button. I can choose an IP address from my available pool here. Click Publish. And then you'll see that the title changes here. And Web Server Farm is now available on this public IP. And if those two servers that I had put in there were real servers, I could put that IP in my browser, and every time I refreshed, you would see the traffic going to the different servers. So that's pretty much the cloud load balancing in a nutshell. But before I go, you may want to check out the Manage Monitors tab. Uh, here you can create different monitors for testing your servers. And there's a lot of uh, default monitors that are very easy to set up. 
And there's also a huge pile of advanced monitors to give you a lot of granular control over detecting your servers and their status. But we'll cover all of those in another video. For now, that's it.